They are nameless, long dead for decades. They're unidentified. Some are victims of violent crimes. Phoenix police cold case detectives are using genetic code to solve these cold cases, ultimately reuniting John or Jane Doe's with their loved ones. Thanks to forensic genealogy, Fox 10's Justin Lum tonight reports on how advanced DNA technology is becoming the go-to strategy. I want to capture a likeness that would be if a family member or an acquaintance saw it would trigger the recognition. There is a special focus behind his process, not just a sketch, but the facial reconstruction of someone Stephen Missile has never met. Each feature, each mark, what makes them who they are, a piece of the map to find their identity and bring them home. Some of the images are quite frankly disturbing. Missile is a forensic reconstruction artist. He draws faces of the unidentified for the Maricopa County Medical Examiner. I'm honoring them. I'm honoring their family. Staring at the dead, making them recognizable. <laughs> the lead investigator on this case is Detective Stuart Summershoe with Phoenix Police. Holiday, every birthday, every anniversary of the disappearance, not knowing. Plastered across these walls, questions echo for dozens of families, not knowing what happened to missing loved ones for years, sometimes decades. It, it damages families, it destroys families. According to the National Missing and Unidentified Person System, Arizona has the second highest number of unidentified people in the U.S. In Arizona, we're, we have almost 2,000 unidentified bodies. And nationwide, it's estimated we had 40,000 unidentified bodies. Summer Shoe says the close proximity to the border is one factor as people cross into the desert and die. The arid climate turns remains into skeletons quickly, their identities left unknown. One thing you get when you're born is you get your name. That's the one thing you should be able to keep when you die. And these people are denied that. You know, they're just a John or a Jane Doe. Enter the DNA Doe Project, a nonprofit organization fueled by 60 genealogists volunteering to help law enforcement identify John and Jane Doe's. Here's how it works. The unidentified person's DNA profile is uploaded to two public databases. DNA Doe Project uses family tree DNA and GEDmatch, thus casting a wide net, finding matches, and narrowing down connections to John or Jane Doe, pinpointing relatives based on shared DNA. They're mapping out a family tree in, in hopes of finding her Jane Doe. Which brings us back to this drawing of a woman known to Summer Shoe as Broadway Street Jane Doe. Described as Hispanic, 40 to 50 years old, 5 foot 4 with short brown hair and brown eyes. She was hit by a car in Phoenix, left to die near South 15th Street in East Broadway on November 21st, 2004. Investigators found scribbling on her palm. According to DDP, the victim's DNA is traced back to Calvillo, a small town in Aguas Calientes, Mexico, where her parents are believed to be from. But forensic genealogist Karen Binder says the Jane Doe could be found in multiple branches of a family tree. That's the hard part about solving her case, is not only does she have limited matches because um, she's born in a foreign country most likely, but also um, it's challenging because of the various connections between her family tree and her matches family trees. We're trying to reach out to people who are from there, who might know this lady, who have a missing friend or a missing family member, and ask them to contact us. Phoenix PD and the DNA Doe Project are working on another active case together. February 4th, 1997, a woman is found dead, partially burned in an abandoned blue Honda Accord near North 24th and East Monroe Streets. This case is significant for Detective Summershoe. I was a young patrol officer and I responded to that scene and uh, just serendipity or whatever, I inherited that case when I became a detective and so we've been working to try to figure out who she is. The first dead body Summer Shoe saw on duty. She's known as Monique because of the name written on the purse found by her side. She's described as African American, five foot three and 100 pounds, possibly a transient seen in the area back then. Pending cases are those undergoing extraction or DNA sequencing, 
I'm told the pandemic has caused delays. We have a lot of pending cases right now that we believe we've identified, but some of the labs have been um, understaffed or closed down during the pandemic at various times. The success of identification is motivation. In April 2004, Phoenix police found the remains of a middle-aged woman in a rolled-up carpet. The case went cold for nearly 16 years until DDP used the victim's DNA to find a link between families. Detective Summershoe says the next call he made gave him chills. With Ginger Bibbs, family when I reached out to her father who was in his 80s, uh, he's like, he's like, I've been waiting for this phone call. The ID of Ginger Lynn Bibb would be confirmed after her dad submitted his DNA for testing. Summershoe hopes to solve many more cold cases through forensic genealogy. I think this is as major a development as DNA was originally when that started, you know, that, and that solved a lot of cases on its own, but now we're, we're even going further. And deeper into the story of one's genetic code, connecting face to name. If I get an ID, um, I tell my wife, we go high five, I'm happy, and then uh, I've actually met a couple of the families, and that, that's very emotionally moving. So that's reward enough for me. Justin Lum, Fox 10 News. If you have any information on the hit and run that Justin reported on this cold case, you can call Silent Witness 480-WITNESS. You can always remain anonymous and could earn a cash reward.